Hi, I'm Liberty and welcome to my needle felting tutorials. This tutorial is how to make this cute little seal. It's the perfect project for beginners and those who've always done, already done a little bit of felting um, and just want to hone their technique. Okay, so this is what you need. If you have one of the seal making kits, um, then you have everything you need except for a pair of small scissors, a needle and thread. Otherwise, there's a picture coming up now which shows you everything you will need in order to make this seal if you don't have one of my kits. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to email me. The address is coming up on the bottom of the screen. Or if you have any problems sourcing materials and colours of wool, I'm here to help. Okay, let's get going. To make your seal, or in your kit, you will find some bulk core wool, some light blue wool, dark blue, pure white, a brown, two beads for eyes of about 7 millimetre diameter, a felting mat, two felting needles, I have a black and a red of different gauges, a thick and a thin and a template or piece of paper for you to sketch template. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach how to make a cute little seal, just like this one. This is a simple project and perfect for beginners because of this simple shape, but you can make it as complex as you like later on and experiment with all your colors. What you need, if you either have one of, one of my kits, or you will need some blue, various shades, some white, some core wool, and some dark wool, black or brown ideally, and two black bead eyes. Now to begin. You should have a template, or you can make one up yourself. This is where we start, with the head as a round circle. I've done it slightly larger than the head because as we work with the wool, it gets smaller and smaller. So we start making a ball that is larger than the head we need, and we should work onto the body. You will need some felting needles, and ideally a mat. White wool, blue wool, and some thick, bulky core wool like this. I'm going to start making the head. Measure roughly how much I need. And then with my black headed needle, gently prod round. If you think you might prick yourself, use your mat. All we're doing at this point is really just getting it to hold together, to bind a little bit. So folding in those loose ends. There we go, it's, it's coming as it goes round. You see, now it's firm and it's holding in place, but it's still quite large and still a little bit soft, podgy feeling. <laughs> so I want to make it slightly firmer.
You might see little bits of vegetable batter in Cornwall, but it hasn't been, it's been cleaned, but it hasn't been brushed and combed quite often. So you sometimes find little bits of leaf. I'll <laughs> tell you it's a de definitely a natural product. beginning to feel happy with this now. It's just feeling a bit firmer. Hmm. There we are. If you want it really, really stiff and dense, then keep working over it and add more cool wool on top. And that, then you'll end up with a, a sculpture at the end that is very, very dense and firm. That is a matter of personal preference, I feel. So there we go. Get that out too. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That size is about where I want it at the moment. It's about the same size as my ball on my template. I'm going to start with the body. Don't worry too much at the beginning about getting that curved shape. Wool is very, um, how should I say, forgiving is the word I'm looking for. It's very forgiving for mistakes um, and you can bend it as you're working. So I'm just going to add this to one end of the head, like that, all round. This bit I do like to work onto the mat because it helps me get my shape. So if I'm thinking of that, I'm thinking, yes, it's coming down and I'm going to curl up in a minute. But this is still very, very loose. So I do my approximate shape that I'm aiming for and it stays on the mat. So I can just look at that and think, that's about there. Probably I'll need some more down here and I'm going to thin this out, but I need a bit more wool on there. So that's a good handful. Narrow at one end and add it on top just like that. You can pinch it in and then prod to hold it in place. And round I go. I'm not wanting it flat because of my seal. He's not got a flat body. He's quite broad. But that we will add up, we will add on. Um, and for his flippers there. Could be a she, of course. A she seal. I'm going to turn her over and you'll see the other side is rather flat now compared to the other side so I'm going to just add a little bit this side
not from below the head, but actually so I want a nice smooth line. So moving from, joining it from about the middle of the head and down. Can you see? That's it. Prodding into my curve. Almost a bird shape at this stage. Right, now I'm going to hold hold my sculpture in the air and prod round. At this point, you're, you're reasonably safe from prodding yourself because you've got quite a large amount of wool in your hand. It's when you're doing starting at the beginning and you're doing small things. There is the, the added danger of pricking yourself. I'm not doing really big stabs. If I did really big stabs, I'd be pushing the wall really deeply in and it would distort the shape. So about that, it's going in just to where the needle is getting thicker before I put it out again. Working my way on the underneath first because that's my curve and that's going to ensure that I'm not going to go too thin. Pinching in the tail, which we're going to add on the flippers afterwards. So from the bottom you've got a narrowing there and then a broadening of the body. And likewise narrowing there and a broadening of the body. It's important when you're doing a 3D sculpture to continually turn it around. Otherwise you find that shape looks perfect and then you turn it over and you think, oh whoops and the rest doesn't look, you want it to look right from 360 degrees once you've finished. So keep turning it in your hand. Now I want this sculpture reasonably firm so it stands up and it lasts longer. When they're firmer, they do tend to hold together and bind better. So, if I haven't used enough wool, because we'll need to shape the fin there, I think we may add a little bit more. See how my head is quite broad there? I want this bit wider than my head. So, these two bits here wider than the little round bit on top, which they aren't at the moment. So I can adjust that by narrowing my head. And adding some more bits on the side.
slightly too pronounced. Smooth that off a bit. I'm getting happier with that. Now I'm going to turn it over and do the same on the other side. So a little bit more. Bulk up this bit. Now let's check onto my template again. Yep, that's not too bad. And I've got a nice thickness there on the base. So we want him to be able to, to balance nicely with his head pointing upwards. An alert seal we've got, not a sleepy seal today. <laughs> so that's that bit. Now for the his flippers. His flippers are a more distinctive shape and I've decided to draw them onto my mat. Again I get some core wool not too much this time, and roughly shape it to this upside down leg pattern. I'm going to fix it right above on one end. I work my way round. It doesn't need to be exactly inside the lines because I'm going to be shaping it in my hand in a minute. But this is to give me my initial shape that I want to work with. And I'm going to leave that loose. Do the same the other side. Where's that line? There it is. Now I know that isn't quite thick enough, but I do have my initial shapes. I'm going to carefully pull it up, turn it over, adjust it back into shape slightly, and add a little bit on the other side. When I'm trying to get a sharper line, I tend to put my finger there and go along your nail. This means you don't prick yourself, but it can give you a nicer, sharper edge. One 
side and now the other. Now we pull it off very carefully. And bring back our seal. This time, because I left this and it's quite flat, it will curl round that end tail piece that I left. So I'm gonna pinch it on like that. and fix it in place from either side. Making sure it still stays quite narrow. And work along the body, adding the rest. This helps you get a nice smooth join. If you cut off wool, you tend to get all the fibres ending in a harsh line. So if I was to snip that there, you'd then get a very harsh line to add, which will takes a lot more work to disguise. So it's best to leave it natural tufty ends which you can work through. And underneath. See at the moment my tail is down which I quite like as well. It's going to help in balance but you can when you this is what I was talking about, wool being very forgiving. Move it up like that, adjust it to exactly how you want it. And then a few prods and it will stay in place for you. How wonderful is that? There you are. Now, I'm slightly concerned here. I've got a sharp line between. I can see the ball there and my body. And I want that smooth. The front is smooth. That side is smooth, so I've just missed a bit here where I've got a bit of a lump, a bit of a step. So I don't like that, I'm just going to cover it. It's a good idea to get the shape so you're really, really happy with it before you start applying the colour on top. The colour is a thin merino wool. Generally speaking, you can use thicker wools, um, dyed ones. You can sometimes come across Corridale wool, which is a thicker, bouncier wool. It doesn't give such a smooth finish but it's actually very good for felting because of the bulk it has. There we are. So, but it's a good idea to get it as smooth as possible before you start adding your colour. So I'm happier with that now. That's got a much smoother join. And we are almost ready to add our first colour, being the blue. The blue I'm using today is a beautiful blue. Now, my sons came up to me and said, well, shouldn't seals be grey? And I said, yes, well, you can do them grey if you want to. But I like my sculptures to stand out and I've done so many rabbits recently that are always brown I thought I want to do something that's a bright colour and I thought well a seal when it's in the sea it looks blue it's in the all the water reflecting off it and this is such a beautiful blue this one has um, striations of different colours tones of blue which I really like So 
So if I show you the the seal as, as it should be, the blue only starts halfway, halfway up the head and we're going to take it up and over and down the back. So this is the bit we're going to be doing first. So I'm going to put it as though it's a beard. There's my blue, I've got a bit too much. There we are, it's nice and straight. My beard halfway up my head. I'm then going to apply it just in a straight line across. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change to my red needle, which is slightly thinner. The needles I refer to come, come in the kits and they're all explained. Um, otherwise, I shall add later the different gauges for these needles because the gauge of needle is very important when you are at this stage of sculpting and styling. If it's too thick a needle, it's going to make big, like, pock marks. Now I feel that's nicely attached. And I'm going to give it, there we are, a bit like an Elvis quiff. And back he goes. This gives a beautiful smooth edge and a smooth covering. I'm going to go over it, fixing it in place. Now this is the stage where with the finer needle and you're applying the blue felt all on, on top, you're finding that you will be gradually making your head smaller, which is what you want. You want it to be slightly shrinking in size. See those beautiful lines there? Almost looks like hair, doesn't it? This is the very therapeutic part of felting. Time to add some more. I'm going to come round and then forward. So leaving about, going back a bit and then coming forward. If you don't get this curve right immediately, it's nothing to worry about. I've just made a mistake. Oh, and off it comes again. Mm. 
Now I don't mind building this a little bit up here with a, almost like a double layer, which is why I folded it back on itself. Also, if you miss bits, don't worry. They're easy to patch a little bit later on. Underneath, so you're going to go down just so the blue disappears underneath. So I will need a little bit more under there so I can bring it down. When adding, I just make sure I put it in the same line as the others that I put across. I wouldn't add it across the grain like that, I put it in the same flow line work my ends in I'm not going to go up the tail at the moment, I'm going to do the tail after I've done the face. Fill in that little gap there. Again, following the grain, the flow of the fibres. do the same on the other side. Now I'm adding it down this side and making sure, or trying to, that I'm getting them equal either side. Coming to about there.
At this point, I'm not worrying about getting it all lovely and smooth or getting every loose piece of wool fibre attached. I'm just wanting a covering but then I can work over it right at the end when it, I come to the final shaping and finishing off. I just want to make sure that I've got I've covered all that core wool so there's no white showing through from underneath. And it's it's fixed in place. So there we are. And it's roughly even. Which that isn't yet. That needs to come down a bit. This constant checking and turning it around is essential. There's nothing more disheartening than getting to the end of a project and thinking you've done really well and then in turning it over and thinking, whoops, one eye is higher than the other eye or one wing is huge and the other wing is weeny. So constantly check. Which can be hard to do because you get so involved and in concentrating on one side, you get totally you forget to check. Right. See, that's looking more even. Okay. Now I'm going to add some white. I don't like to use the, the blanched white. This is more of a natural off-white um, colour. Less glary. I did buy some milk white, so I thought that would actually be possibly a nice creamy, like a buttermilk colour. But it wasn't. It was, it was bright, bright white. Not what I wanted at all. Right. So here we are. We're going to add the white. I'm going to add white all under this area and then put his cheeks on in a minute. And we'll do the cheeks, the nose, and then we're going to do the eyes. Once you do the eyes on a sculpture, it all changes. It's all... Um... No, that's too messy. Right. Concentrate. <laughs> Get these nice and smooth again. I had picked it up in a bit of a clump, and that was going to cause me problems getting it smooth later. Right. That's better. So, on it goes. In fact, I'm going to do the reverse of what I did last time. An upward beard. Attach these ends. It really does help prevent that knotting at the top. There we go. And back it comes. following my line that I made. Back and in. The other side. Back. And in. Back to my red needle, which is finer. White goes all the way underneath the tummy here.
this join here is going to be covered up in a minute, so don't worry too much because that's where we're adding the cheeks. So if you get a gap on that top bit, don't worry, but you don't want a gap on the sides here, ideally. Now I've still got a bit of cool wool shining through there, which I don't want. So I'll cover it up now. But I'm not going to worry too much about that under bit. I just want this front bit looking nice. find that the two colours are mixing, I'm just using the edge of my needle gently to comb it away. There we are. Okay, so onto these little cheeks. Now this one's ended up slightly larger so far. I'm probably going to have to take him in a bit. I'm going to have some more cool wool. And I'm going to roll it up into a little ball between my fingers like that, as much as I possibly can. And look at it for size on there. That's probably a bit small. Let's move this out of the way so it makes, makes it slip. more. How's that? That's looking better. Okay, now I'm going to try and measure an equal amount before I apply it. So do they feel the same? They do roughly. Okay. So fold it over as much as you possibly can so it's nice and tight. And as you can see, they're touching at the top but not at the bottom. I'm going to use my black needle, my thicker needle, and apply the top end right to the middle. So the middle of the head and one corner of this ball goes in. And then it's more of an oval shape working back. So going along that line of the blue, back to the edge, in, round. And again, you see it's more like an egg shape. Once it's fixed, I go to my red needle and push it down and in. All the way over and down from the top and round. And there we are. Now we'll do the same with the other one. I've got my ball. I'm going to put it there. Attach the top bit. Not quite touching. Just in the centre there. Work round. Follow the top. Round. And tuck it in. Back to my red needle. And work it round. 
Now have a look. Do they look roughly the same? Sort of. Have a little tweak. And when you're happy, they're ready to cover in more white. Comb in the loose ones. Over it goes. Gently prod all over. You don't want to be flattening it and overworking it at this point. Lose these loose ones. your flow there, help your covering. And the other side. And bring your angle here. Don't cover up that nice blue curve you've got. didn't get enough white on there. It's looking slightly pale. You can still see some core cool walls through, so I'm just doing another little layer on that bit. There we are. See as I'm smoothing them down this line here, this meeting where they, the blue and the white meet, I'm pushing the white down and leaving the blue. And every time I do that it's making the blue stand out more and the white go in, which gradually is forming his fin shape. But I will come back and do more to that later. Okay. I want his neck slightly in there. Next, we're going to add the nose. For the nose, we need some dark brown. This is a, a bit of Jacob dark brown, so it's not as fine as the merino. You can use merino, you just need to um, have a little bit more because it goes down to a finer a finer, a smaller ball because, because of the finer fibres. Whereas if you have something that's slightly more um, bulky, like the Corridale or the Jacobs, the, the rarer breed wools really, um, then they stay, they're easy to do little shapes like balls like this. I've rolled it between my fingers first and very gently prodding it in with my, my red needle, just very carefully. Not too small. 
and it's going to sit about there. In fact, I think I want it slightly larger, a little making it a bit more of a, a focus on the face. So wrap that round there. Bring in the ends a little bit. Right, try again. Is that a better size? Yes, that's a bit bigger. I'm just going to fix it round the edge by prodding in just around the edge. Going over the top now just gently without squashing it down. There we go. slightly pointy so it's slightly triangular so as I'm doing it I'm going to try and shape it you can keep it round if you like but I want mine slightly flatter on top and coming down to a triangular bit there right now these cheeky bits I'm going to push them in and you see how the wool is quite malleable because we haven't overworked it we're still leaving it um, slightly soft and spongy you can work it in so I'm pushing these in a bit now I want them slightly closer together and I'm going to emphasize the mouth taking the same brown teasing out a strand from one end and then I'm going to twist like that now the twist is is very useful for anywhere you want to do a line in felting be it in a picture or in a sculpture so for plant stems and something like that, it just it just helps you position your line. So going from the centre of your nose down and tucking it right in and underneath. And the, the more curved, the more smiley your seal will be. trim off the excess. Tuck it right in. Bring the blue down into it. And you see that? Right in there. And do the same the other side. Tease it out from one end. Twist, twisting, everybody's feeling great, we're twisting, ooh, twisting, in it goes. If you're pushing some some um, wool in and you're finding it just resisting, probably means you just need to swap and use the smaller needle. Don't fight it. If you fight it, you'll distort your shape, which is why just then I, I swapped to the smaller red needle. So I just felt it was too much of a pull. Pull my blue in at the side. So the edges meet, and there we are. Now time for the really fun bit, we're going to add the eyes. I'm going to choose first where I want my eyes, probably about there and there. If you do a few prods, you can sort of get a feel for how they might look, about there and there. Right, okay, so I'm happy with that. So I'm going to make it slight indentations. And at this point, you, this is where you'll need your needle and thread. Black is best if you're using black bead eyes, which you will have in your kit. 
um, because then the thread doesn't show against the eye. So I'm going to come in from the back into my hole right to the center where I marked where I wanted my eye. Put it through leaving enough to be able to tie a knot on the end. Thread my eye. At this point I'm going to go through to the next eye space. So down, back and across to the other side. Arrange the bead so you don't see the holes as much as possible. Thread your other eye. And this time you're going to be going back through, right to the back, pop out as close as you possibly can to the end of your thread. Put it tight, arrange your eye. Now here, without breaking the thread, you need to pull it taut and pull it quite tightly in. Um, that's why I've used double thread, double thickness. And I'm gonna give it a tug. See the eyes are being pulled into the head. And pull. Don't worry if it distorts the back of your head there because you're going to cover that anyway. With some more wool that's easy to cover up. And there you have your eyes all in place. But he's looking a bit goofy. We've got a goofy seal at the moment. So what we're going to do we're going to give them some eyelids, which just can create a more natural eye socket. There we are. So I've pulled out a few strands of my dark blue that I was using. I'm going to double it over. And that end, I'm going to put to the inner edge of the eye the inner edge of the eye about there, I'm going to fix that in place. I'm using my red needle because this is more delicate work, so it's the red needle. And pull it over and fix it at the top. Using the edge of the needle, you can then style your eyelid. Making your seal wide awake or half asleep, as you wish. Bring it down that side. And smooth it round. If you have more eye showing um, on the, the, the inside bit, the bit that's closer to the nose, the seal will look slightly more endearing. If you have the, the higher bit this side and it going closer there, then he will look crosser then a little bit more angry. So if you raise this side, raise the bit on the left as you're looking at your eye and then bring it down on the right side, they will look slightly cuter. You can play around.
but already now my seal is beginning to have his own character and it will be different to the other one I did. Making two exactly the same is very, very tricky. Um, in fact, these have grown <laughs> in this one and I will be shaping it more after I've put all the details on. It'll give him his other eyebrow, or eyelid rather. Remember to fold. And fix on the inner bit. So it's hard, difficult to show you this and apply it at the same time. There we are. So now my seal is beginning to have a real little character. I'm going to cover that little bit of thread up before I forget. Now I want to just shape his tummy to make sure that his fins really look as though they are separate fins to his tummy. So with my thicker needle I'm going to prod round where they meet, the white and the blue meet, making a much more distinguished line. Then the other side. Now I feel that one is slightly larger, so I'm going to prod about with that one. And the next thing we're going to do is add the little flecks that seals seem to have on their bodies, a bit like freckles really. We have freckly tummies. So the freckly tummy, requires another bit of brown. Now we're going to add little bits of light brown, at this point you could use also grey. And I'm going to roll them again between my fingers, because they're going to be slightly formed shapes not fluffy, little specks. That's what I'm applying. Now as I apply each speck, I'm working around it as well, because initially when we put on the white wool, we didn't work over it very, very much. We didn't get it really dense and thick. We were just applying it and getting it in place. So 
so it still has loose fronds on it really. So at this point I'm working around it, each spot. Which helps me get it level. I quite like to vary the size of my spots. Even thought of doing a heart shaped one. Maybe for Valentine's Day. Okay, so one more there to balance it, and there I'm done. check for his symmetry. What I find, I think I've done something symmetrically and then you come back to it huh? five, ten minutes later and you think, oh no, that's way off. So, uh, little adjustments. And he needs a flat base so he can stand up. And I've got to add some more blue down here and then working into the tail. So my tail is going to be dark blue underneath. From there a bit more. But for the actual flippers themselves, I want to make them a slightly different colour to stand out a bit. Like that. 
that is higher one side than the other. So for my tail, let's have a little look. It's been left alone for a while, so it might have become a bit misshapen. This is the time now to just tweak it and get it back to roughly as you want it. Nice and narrow at the base. So carefully going between your fingers. And I'm going to this time blend my colours of wool. I want it more of a turquoise blue at the tip, gradually turning into the dark blue. So I'm going to add the light blue on the base first. This is where a mat is also very handy to have. If you rest him upside down, hopefully we'll stay there. There we are. Get your turquoise and apply it on top, leaving stumped spare at the edges. Sorry, it's hard to see on this, this blue mat, but I'm not going right up to the edge. I'm leaving loose bits at the edge for me to tuck around the corners. So come down there. I don't want this blue going all the way down, so I'm going to snip it off. Add some to the other side. Here the little prompt of the sh original shape is actually quite a help, just to remind you what you're aiming for. up and do the other side. Again going just off around the edge. Dark brown there, I don't want. There we go. 
Now this is where I want them to be gradated, so I'm going to do some blending. You can stay in place there. I'm going to take some from the end. Always pull from the end between your thumb and your uh, forefinger and pulling gently away. The same, lift it on top, grab two at the top, both colours and pull away. And pull away, maybe one on top and pull away. You don't want too much, that way you get the more, all the fibres flowing in the same direction and not too generous amount. If it's too generous it's hard to mix. Pull and place on top. Try not to fold because that's when you get it messy so don't do like that and fold it on top because there's always some that end up knotting each other. So pull gently from the ends and on top. And if they're not coming coming apart you know you're gripping too hard or you're pulling from too far to the close to the middle. So just at the ends. There we are. So now I have much more of a mix. I've got my colours here and I'm going to put those, divide it in two. Down the centre of one. And down the centre of the other. where I had the dividing line and work up and round. Now from here You want to make sure that they're not too joined up, they haven't joined each other too much. If they have, a little snip like that down the middle. And you're going to go round with your red needle the edge. Hold it carefully between your thumb and your middle finger. And with the end of your needle, just fold over the sides to the back. So you fold it over and to the back and just tuck it in and you're going to work your way along the edge. Holding it in, pinching it in, like that. So pinch, push, any loose ones, push them over and tuck them behind. Push together, prod. Push together, prod. And you're going to work your way right round the flippers in this way. Remember, you've still got this shape at the end. So try to not prod in, because it's only soft. So it is very easy to go over it and lose the shape, initial shape that you gave yourself to work with. So just carefully work around that curve at the end and then push in more forcefully underneath it. That's it. Oh, I just caught myself there. This is the bit where you can pick yourself. And you come.
to comb the colours with the end of the needle here. If you find your wool gets slightly knotted, comb it like that. Now we're at the final shaping and, and smoothing stage. And at this point you have the fun of thinking, what name am I going to give my, my seal? Celia immediately jumps to mind, but I'm going to keep thinking, especially as I keep calling him a he, so it can't be Celia. It'd have to be something else, won't you? So you keep working over the, the surface with your red needle. Until you're happy with the texture. Look at him again and what's happened, he's Come out a bit there, and he's so he needs to be smoothed. When you think you're happy with him, if there are any loose bits, you can just trim them off. With some nail scissors. <laughs> if bits that appear still a little bit fluffy. And I'm going to continue with my red needle, shaping and smoothing him until I'm really just very, very, totally happy with his shape. But that is your seal. I get to test to make sure he stands up. Does he stand up? Nope, so I need to do a little bit more there of the flattening on his underside. And there you have, there we are, your seal. <laughs>